And the Bible made us to know in Psalm 127 verse 3 that children are a gift from the Lord and they are a reward from him. And the Bible made us to understand that the blessings of the Lord make it rich and add no sorrow. So these children are a blessing to us. So this evening, we want to begin by thanking the Lord for giving us children. There are so many people that are out there looking for one, but it has not been made possible for them. That God has blessed us with children. It's not because of our righteousness. It's because of his mercies and his love. Can we therefore open our mouth and begin to appreciate the Lord tonight for the blessings of children. Father, we thank you, O Lord. We glorify your name for the privilege, O God, you have given to us in life. So bless us, O God, with the gift of children. We want to thank you. We appreciate you. We glorify your name for you are faithful and true. Hallowed be your name, most excellent God, in the mighty name of our Lord. Thank you, my God and my Father. Not because of Mary, we are coming on the basis of mercy. Thank you, O oh Lord God of my in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Proverbs 22, verse 6 says that we should direct our children in the right path that they should go. And when they are older, they will not leave it. We're going to pray tonight and ask the Lord to give us the grace as parents to continue to direct our children in the right path that they should go in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we are praying to God for ourselves as parents, O oh Lord, our God, to be able to direct our children in the right path. In the name of Lord, our God, to direct our children in the path they should go. And our prayer, O Lord, our God, is that your grace shall be more than sufficient by us. We are going to decree and declare that when our children will grow old, when they are older, that they will never depart from the way of the Lord. They Amen. will never depart from this right path we have led them. That Amen. when they grow old, they will continue to be true worshippers of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Shall we pray? Amen. Lord, my Father, Lord, my Father, we God, Lord, our God, 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 our God, children as they grow old, God, they shall always remain in you, God. They shall continually be so worshippers of God. From now on, God, in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we ask, oh Lord, God, the mighty name of Jesus, none of them will fall Jesus name we pray amen. amen in Acts of the apostles chapter 4 verse 29 after they threatened Peter and John not to preach again in the name of Jesus Christ the Bible said that they went back to the brethren and they told them everything and they asked the Lord to give them the boldness to continue to declare the word of the Lord. Tonight we are going to pray. Oh God, give boldness unto our children. Amen. That no matter the solution, no matter the threats from their peers, they will boldly stand for the Lord. Amen. So Amen. Oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Wherever they are, Lord, boldly stand for your truth. Boldness for your word. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Oh God, that you can see Second Timothy chapter one verse seven says that God has not given us the spirit of fear. We are therefore going to decree. God has not given our children the spirit of fear. Amen. They will not be afraid of their peers to the extent Amen. that they will lose their faith. We are going to pray against every spirit of fear 
Amen. that will make any of our children not to be true worshippers of our Lord Jesus Amen. Christ. Shall we pray? My God and my Father, Revelation chapter 2, verse 14. When God was talking to the church in Paganum, he told them that he has this thing against them, that they have joined, the, followed the teaching of Balaam, which mm. is the false doctrine. We are going to pray for our children that none of our children shall be victim of false teaching or false doctrine. That we make them not to be true worshippers of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, my dear, let the Lord be with us. We are praying for our children. 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 I do not think of all, Lord, that I have not done it to all. In the name of Jesus, before the Lord, in the name of God, 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 in the name of Therefore, being surrounded, known that we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, that we should throw off every weight and sin that entangles us. We are going to decree and declare every weight, every sin that will make our children not to be true worshippers. Let the Lord give them the grace to throw them off, to do away with them in the mighty name of our Lord in the name of Jesus. Amen. That verse 2 of Hebrews chapter 2 said, fixing your eyes on Jesus, the mm. author and finisher of your faith. We're going to ask the Lord to cause our children to fix their eyes on Jesus Christ, who is the author and finisher of their faith, that they will never lose the vision of Jesus in their lives in Jesus' name. My dear and everlasting Father, we are praying, oh God, for our children. And you have them, oh Lord, our God, to go to the eyes of Jesus Christ. We will never lose the vision of Jesus in their lives. We will never lose the vision of Jesus in their lives. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. We'll also pray and ask the Lord to deliver our children from every form of internet addiction, any form of addiction to internet. That will make them to lose the vision of God in their lives. May the Lord deliver them from such in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I can never last in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we deliver our children from social media. Deliver them from all this internet. Father, that will make them from addiction of any kind. God, internet, any form of crime, whatever it is, cause addiction. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In Philippians chapter 2, verse 3, 13, he said, For God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. We are going to pray that God will continue to walk in the lives of our children. That God will continue to give them the desire and the power 
to live to please God in every area of their lives in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In First Samuel chapter 12, verse 23, Samuel speaking to the Israelites, he said, Far be it from me that I should stop praying for you. We are going to pray that for all the parents and caregivers, that God will continue to give them the grace to Amen. continue to pray for their children. Amen. No matter whatever way their children are behaving, whether they are going contrary to their instructions, that they will not be tired of praying for them. Amen. That they will continue to pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. But the Lord, we are asking, oh God, for all the prayers, oh Lord, our God, for all the prayers and to pray for our children, oh Lord, we're going to stand on the authority that is in the name of Jesus Christ to decree against every plan and purposes of the devil to hinder our children from being true worshippers of God. We are going to stand against it because we know that there are forces that are out there to hinder our children, to hinder these youths from serving the Lord in spirit and in truth. Therefore, we want to arrest such powers, whether they are coming from any ancestral or generational order. We are going to place a standard against them over the lives of our children. In the mighty name of Jesus, and the Lord has handed on authority that is in the name of Jesus Christ. To give that to our Muslim children, to raise the standard against the generational order, against the ancestral Bible in Colossians chapter 1 verse 23 made us to know that it is God that will help us to be established and stand firm in him. And so we're going to pray this evening and decree that our children will continue in faith, established and firm in the Amen. Lord. They will continue to be true worshipers of our Amen. Lord Jesus Christ in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we are asking the Lord tonight, O Lord, that our children will continue in faith. Loving and faithful God, we want to thank you, we want to appreciate you tonight, oh Lord our God. For the Bible said that children are a gift from the Lord and Amen. they are a blessing. And Amen. your blessings make it rich and add no sorrow to it. Therefore, Amen. having blessed us with our children, Father, we decree and declare no sorrow will come out of these children that Amen. you have given to your people in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Oh Lord, our God, that they will continue to grow up in the fear and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. That none of them shall lose the vision of Jesus Christ. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We decree and declare, in this depraved world, our children Amen. will continue to shine brighter Amen. and brighter. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Our toiling our children shall not be in vain. None Amen. of our children shall be doomed to misfortune. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Our children shall be taught by the Lord Amen. and great shall be their peace. Thank Amen. you, my God and my father, Thank because you. we and our children 
we shall continue to be true worshippers of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you for having heard our prayers. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. And amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We, we want to thank God for that uh, short prayer about our children and the part we have to play even over their lives. Before we continue with the second part of the prayer session, I would like us to look briefly into the word with regards to the theme for this uh, month's prayer session. But before that, permit me to please just make some little comment. This is my first time of ministering through this uh, platform, the Salt and Light Club. I'm excited about that name. And I want to thank God, especially from the context of the fact that uh, we were primarily created for koinonia, for intimacy with the Lord. But he placed us here on earth to be containers, to carry his light. Mm -hmm. We confirm that from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6. Mm -hmm. And he said, when God said, let there be light, that light was the light of the glory of God, shining in the face of Jesus Christ. Verse Amen. 7 now adds to that. He said, we are jars of clay to carry that light. And Bible calls it treasure. So we are primarily containers, eighteen vessels, to carry the light of God, number one. Number two, to shine that light. Amen. Number three, to use that light to chase darkness. And number four, to multiply that light. Amen. So in from that context, I'm excited about salt and light club. And I pray that God will continue to expand your horizon of ministry so that this light can be carried to the ends of the world. Because the, 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 the primary injunction about the Great Commission is said, let this light be multiplied. Mm. That's the Great Commission until the light fills the earth as the water covers the sea. Mm. As of now, we are watching that light cover the whole world. So I pray that through the To bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So going back to the theme for this month's program, our anchor portion is John chapter 4, verse number 23. Yet, I'm reading from the New International Version. Yet a time is coming and has now come when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For they are the kind of worshipers the father seeks. Some translations say this is the kind of worshippers the father is searching out for. So the few points I just want to make so that we can continue our prayer. Number one, I'm uh, touched by the fact that God, the owner of this universe, the maker of heaven and earth, at a point has a need. It's a very big uh, point that God began to seek. He had a need. And the second point that he began to seek, what was he seeking? for those who are true worshipers. That means if they are true worshipers, then they are also false worshipers. So God, the owner of this universe, the maker of heaven and earth, the person that has it all begins to have a need. And because of that need, he begins to seek and seek for true worshipers. But I'm also excited about the location of this dialogue. Remember, this was a dialogue between Jesus Christ and the uh, a woman that the society had condemned. The location mm -hmm. is a little community called Saika. Saika was at the foot of a mountain called Gerizim. Gerizim was facing another mountain called Ebal. And this was the location um, um, Moses was talking about to the Israelites. He said God has ministered to him that when eventually they enter Canaan land, six tribes out of 12 should face a mountain called Gerizim and place blessings there. And then the other six tribes should face the opposite mountain called Eba and place curses there. When they had already entered Canaan land, and he now spoke to them through Joshua and said, when they come to that location, it's a, a, this, a place of decision. We'll find that in Deuteronomy chapter 11. He said they should choose between life and death, curses and blessing, because of either obedience or disobedience. So mm -hmm. Saika was a location like an no, want to brand is a place of decision. And mm -hmm. the decision was a choice. Each and every Israelite, in quote, each and every child of God should make. Remember that when we make a choice, 
the consequences will also be ours. Mm. This concept began from Eden when God placed two trees, the tree of life and the tree of uh, the knowledge of good and evil. And that concept will continue until the second coming of Jesus Christ, Zechariah mm. chapter 14 or Revelation chapter 19. That is when the tenancy of man will expire. Mm. Before then, each and every one of us comes to a spirit to a cycle to take a decision. Mm. And what was that decision? Remember this woman, the Bible helps us to understand, was a woman condemned by society. Everybody had branded her negative, an adulterer, a bad woman. This mm. was a woman that six men had come in contact with. Each and every one of them battered her, betrayed her, abandoned her until this seventh man called Jesus encountered her. And that was where her story began to change. So it was, number one, a location for decision. And there are multitudes in the value of decision. And the decision each and every one of us is going to take will now determine the consequences that will follow. Number two, it was an appointment by heaven over one person that society had condemned. And I want to thank God. After that dialogue, the woman took a proper decision and her life changed. So it's not only the location and the person that was connected, but the background of such a person. Today, that seventh man is still around the corner, and is, we are believing that each and every one of us will take the proper decision in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And the backbone of this dialogue was about worshiping God, worshiping mm -hmm. God. And the search that God was making was about hearts. Because if we check properly, we thank God because of his goodness. And mm. we use the instrument of our mouth. We praise God for his greatness. We also use the instrument of our mouth. So both in thanksgiving and in praise, it is through the instrumentation of our lips, of our mouth. But when it comes to worship, if it must be true worship, and mm. this is one reason why God is searching, it's not through our lips. It's a matter of attitude. It's a matter mm. of our hearts. That is where God begins to search. That is what exactly he's examining. Why we use our lips to praise and thank him. We use our hearts. So it is our hearts that God is examining. When he's talking about true worshipers, we have to remember that nobody can worship God for us. Each and every one of us has to make a decision, have, make a choice, a concrete choice, a resolution. Be resolute that I have to worship God. And then it has to be, Bible said, in spirit and in truth. Mm. But the, the point I just want to emphasize a little bit is this matter of heart. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. In the Bible, in Isaiah chapter 57, the Bible helps us to understand in verse 15 that God has to address it. He says, I'm paraphrasing it. He said, I am the high and lofty one. I dwell in a high and lofty place. That's heaven. But he says also, I also dwell in the heart of each person whose heart is humble and contrite before me. Mm. So when God is talking about true worshipers, he's talking about our hearts. Mm. So my question this afternoon before we continue in prayer, what is in your heart? Mm. The Bible said in Proverbs chapter 23, verse 26, he said, my son, he's talking about the generic, so it also covers my daughters. My son, my daughter, give me your heart. Mm. I remember a story that was told by a man of God called Jamie Buckingham. Jamie Buckingham was the person that wrote the biography about Catherine Kuhlman. For those of us who, heard, who have heard about that woman, Jamie Buckingham told a story that touched me when I came across it. I can't remember the particular book he wrote that I saw that story. He said he was invited to minister in a location somewhere in the U.S. And then he had prepared and believed God to help him to minister to his children. As he entered the auditorium, where he was to minister, the presence of God was very heavy, and he was excited. So just about the time they were to hand over the microphone to him, he said the president of the fellowship that invited him now intervened and stood up on the pulpit and said, I am being led that somebody here has something to minister to God. Nobody raised his hand. And then this man of God, Jamie Buckingham, said he began to become irritated. So he was wondering, why wouldn't this man call me to begin to speak? But the president of that fellowship continued to say, God is strongly leading me that there is somebody here who needs to minister to the Lord. No special number, a testimony, or whatever. 
after a long time, and by then this man of God was already so much irritated, one old papa raised his hand, and he called up the man, and he took the man a lifetime to shuffle, a retired old man, to shuffle mm -hmm. from his seat to the platform. Mm -hmm. So this man of God said at that time he had become so angry that he knew when the presence of the Lord lifted off him, mm -hmm. and yet he did not report. So when the man came, this old papa, he had a banjo, a local type of guitar, and the strings were loose. He began to adjust and adjust and adjust. After he had finished adjusting the banjo, he said, I have a friend who wants to sing with me. <laughs> and that dragged further. I am sure God was <laughs> trying to teach this man of God a lesson. So he called up his friend, another old man, who took a lifetime to shuffle to the stage. <laughs> the time to sing, their voices were not harmonious. So mm -hmm. this man of God said he became so irritated and became angry that he almost verbalized it. Then he heard a voice behind him that said, shut up. He looked around. It wasn't the president. It wasn't any of the other officers on the high head table. He asked God, I said to you, God said, yes, it's me. Then God asked him, why are you angry? Mm. The man said, don't you see? They have not called me up to speak. You have spoken to me, prepared me, and yet I, they are not calling me up. They are allowing these people to come and waste the time. God now spoke something. God said, keep quiet. Hmm. You judge by the judgment of man, but I'm hmm. judging by the judgment of heaven. Hmm. You are listening to what they are singing. It's not harmonious. The melody is off key. Well, hmm. yes, that's what you think. But I am looking at their hearts, and hmm. I've seen these two old men, that their motive for coming before me to present this song hmm. is pure. And hmm. because their hearts are pure before me, I, God, I have ordered the heavenly choir. Remember the Bible said that thousands upon thousands of angels mm. they stand before God to sing 24 hours. Mm. But when God saw two people whose hearts were pure, he said he had ordered the heavenly choir to stop singing for five minutes so mm. that he can listen to two of his children on earth whose hearts are pure. Mm. Can you imagine heaven standing still for five minutes? Because mm. heaven saw two hearts, mm. two hearts that were pure to minister to the Almighty. God had to order the heavenly choir to stop mm. singing mm. for five minutes. That is the context on which this dialogue, Christ said, heaven is looking for true worshipers. Mm. And God is examining our hearts, examining the hearts of our children, which my mm. wife already led us in prayer, that while we ourselves become what God wants us to be, we mm. have to train up these children to be what God wants them to be also. Mm, so God is searching hearts. Mm. I ask that question again, what is in your heart? Mm. So worship for God is not just a matter of the location. That's why mm. Christ told the woman, a time is coming, and now is when it will not be necessary mm. whether you are worshiping on this mm. mountain or in Jerusalem. A mm. time is coming when the context will not be where, because mm. it will be wherever. It can be whenever. The important thing is you are worshiping God from your heart, mm -hmm. from the innermost parts of your being, not because you have generated emotion, not because you have whipped up any sentiment, but in spirit. Psalm 42, mm -hmm. verse 7, that Bible says, deep calls to deep. So it mm -hmm. is the inner being of man that cries out to the spirit of the living God. And it's also mm -hmm. said in truth. So it's not in hypocrisy. It's not mm -hmm. just to fulfill all righteousness. Mm -hmm. It's not because you are trying to impress anybody. Mm -hmm. It's not because you are trying to please anybody. It's not because you are trying to win applause. Even if you are ministering as a so-called, in quote, worship leader, it's God is looking for men and women with purity of heart, mm -hmm. men and women of integrity, men and women who know that they have come before the owner of this universe to worship him. So that brings us to the question, what is worship? Worship is not singing slow paced song. Mm. Worship is not just anybody lifting up his hand. Mm. I have five definitions I want to give. Worship is recognizing the worship of Jehovah. I'll mm. take that again. Worship is when you recognize the worship of uh, God. Worship number two is every activity in your life you are performing in order to glorify God in the context of you recognize him as sovereign. You recognize him as the owner of this universe. Worship mm. is a direct expression of what you have already been convinced inside. 
So it is a, a matter of attitude, what you are living for. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. So when it is an outward expression of your innermost conviction, then it becomes an appropriate response mm -hmm. to how you honor God. No wonder in the book of Romans, if I may quickly paraphrase it in chapter one, the writer of the book of Romans talks about Gentiles being sinners. In chapter two, he now focuses on Jews also being sinners. By the time you enter chapter three, he's saying all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. By the second half of chapter three, he now introduces how we can best relate back to God. And chapter 4 talks about faith, using Abraham as an example. Chapter 5 compares the old man, the old Adam, and the new Adam, the last Adam. Chapter 6, he introduces the same factor. This thing that has divided us and separated us from God. In chapter 7, he begins to talk about the struggle with the inner man, self, the fallen man. Chapter 8, he now introduces the, the concept of the Holy Spirit. That when we are being propelled by the Holy Spirit, when we are worshiping, when we are ministering to God, when we are serving him by the help of the Holy Spirit, there will now be no more condemnation. For as many as are led, as many as are propelled, as many as are catalyzed from their inner man by the Spirit of the living God. Amen. Chapter 9, 10, 11 uses Israel as a block concept to explain to us. Then he brings him to chapter 12. He now begins chapter 12. Therefore, mm. therefore, I take you. Therefore, mm. I urge you. Therefore, mm. I plead with you. Mm. If you consider God's mercy mm. for what he has done, what mm. is now the appropriate response? He said, lay your whole body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. Then he now asks, this is your reasonable act of worship. Mm. This is an intelligent act of worship. Mm. One translation said, this is your acceptable act of worship. Mm. Another translation said, this is your intelligent, if you are wise, if mm. you think you are learned, the mm. appropriate response that God desires is mm. to worship. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm. One translation said, this is your reasonable. So if there must be a reasonable response to worshiping God, it is with the totality of our being. It is with our total being. It's also with our total time. Quality time in God's presence. It's also with our total talent. Whatever we are doing, whether as parents, whether as children, whether as caregivers, whatever you are doing, your time, your talent, your total being must be involved in worshiping God. So it's Amen. not just about song. Praise Amen. the Lord. That is me, the last point I want to make. And I want to use the story of the woman with the alabaster jar. If you read that story very well, the Bible helps us to understand that woman came before Jesus. She never sang a song. Mm. She never uttered one word. She didn't even say anything. She just had a bent knee. She just had a broken heart. She just poured forth worshipful tears. She laid what would have been her glory, her hairs. She used it to wipe the feet of Jesus Christ. Those who did not understand tried to chastise her, but the Lord rebuked them. And I just want to paraphrase what I understand the Lord was saying. The Lord said this, what this woman is doing, even though she has not uttered the word, even mm -hmm. though she has not sang a song, even mm -hmm. though she has not done any activities, heaven has recognized what she is doing as true worship. Mm -hmm. This is the memorial before heaven. What this woman is doing is true worship, and my father has taken note. Mm -hmm. And that is the challenge. The people that God is looking for out now are those who worship God as a reasonable mm -hmm. response to what God had already done for us. Not that he will do it. Not mm -hmm. that he may do it. Not that he's struggling to do it. He mm -hmm. has already done it. And the rhetorical question he asks in Romans chapter 8, verse 32, if I did not spare my son, if I allowed him to go through what he went through, what mm -hmm. else can I do for you? And the appropriate response, Brother Paul tells us, is to, in a reasonable, intelligent manner, lay mm -hmm. the totality of our being. That is mm -hmm. why in some translation, instead of seeing worship, they put honor. If you honor God with the totality of your being from your mm -hmm. heart, 
heaven will recognize it as a memorial. Yes, that is what God is watching out for mm. in our lives. And he will use us to minister to the young ones, the children. My son, my daughter, give me your heart. Mm. So as we put our eyes in prayer one more time, mm. the question is, what is in your heart? We have come to spirit side. We have come to that place of decision. Mm. Multitudes to place of decision. Mm. And heaven that has it all is searching, mm. is seeking out, Mm. is searching, mm. is seeking out who will worship God in spirit and in truth. These are the worshippers heaven is seeking. It is very, very rare in the scriptures for you to find where the Bible said God is seeking. They are there. But just a few places. Ezekiel mm. chapter 22, verse 30. If you now connect it to Jeremiah chapter 5, where God said, go throughout Jerusalem and see if you can find one person Mm. The amplified now uses a language I like remembering. He said, one uncompromisingly righteous Christian, one uncompromisingly righteous person, mm. one uncompromisingly righteous child of God whose mm. heart has been sold out to the Almighty. Mm. My brother, my sister, what is in your heart? Mm. Can we talk to the Lord? Can we talk to the Lord? Tell the Lord, I am giving you. My whole heart, my whole being. He said, My daughter, my son, my daughter, my son. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your holy name, Lord. Blessed be your holy name, Father. We exalt your mighty name. Thank you for those who worship you in spirit and in truth. And you are searching our hearts. It's our heart you are searching. Father, we give you our heart. We give you our heart, Lord. We give you our heart. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hebrews chapter 3, if you read from verse 16 down to 19, let me paraphrase it because of time. God was asking through the writer of Hebrew some questions that are very serious. He said, who were there who died in the desert? He now answered it. Is it he said, is it not the same people I brought out of Egypt? He asked a question again. Who were there that I killed in the desert? He said, is it not the same people I made the promise? Then he asked a third question. He said, who were they who couldn't enter? And he asked a very important question. Why couldn't they enter? The same people that God brought out of Egypt. The same people that God parted the Red Sea for. The same people that drank, you know, water from the rock and ate manna from heaven. That was their communion. The same people that saw the presence and power of God on Mount Sinai. In quote, that was like their own Pentecost. In quote, he said, why couldn't they enter? Mm. Verses 10 and 11 answers the question. He said, number one, because they didn't know my ways. Number mm. two, because their hearts were always going astray. So you see, okay. it's a matter of heart. The reason why they came out of Egypt, the reason why after they had crossed this Red Sea, the reason why after they had drank water from the rock in Rephidim and they ate manna for those years, they could not still enter. Because, number one, they didn't know God's ways. Number two, their hearts were going astray. Mm. Can we pray and ask God, anything that will make my heart go astray, anything that will not make me want to be God in the heart of God, I lay aside those things. I drop those things. And I also pray for the young ones. Anything like I only pray. Any gadget, oh any contraption, whatever anything that will take my heart to in the name of Jesus Christ, anything that will take my heart to in the name of Jesus and the children of the Lord, that you yourself 
Heavenly Father, of Lord, will help us. That we know you are with that our hearts will be completely before you, so that we will be able to finish well. Help us, help our children, God. Help the heart of our children. Of Jesus, thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. God spoke to me some time ago. He said, "Do you know, my son, that you can be busy in my household, yet you are not my friend?" It's a serious matter. You can be sweating in the household of God. You can be striving in the household of God. You are just being thinned down by the enemy. Any busyness that is not God ordained cannot be God blessed. Mm -hmm. So as many as the enemy wants to just, even though they come to church, even though they walk in good for God, even though they are busy, but they are being thinned down by activity that is not God ordained. Therefore, let us pray and ask God, we and our children, even after we have attended church, when we enter church, let a busyness, activity that is not God ordained, even in the church of God, not thin us out, not burn us out. Let our hearts be fixed. Can we pray that prayer? Thank you, Heavenly Father. Jesus. Blessed be your name, Lord of Lord and King of the Lord. Blessed be your name, Lord of Lord and King of the Lord. Blessed be your name, Lord of Lord and King of the Lord. Blessed be your name, Lord of Lord and King of the Lord. Blessed be your name, Lord of Lord and King of the Lord. Blessed be your name, Lord of Lord and King of the Lord. Blessed be your name, Lord of Lord and King of the Lord. Blessed be your name, Lord of Lord and King of the Lord. Blessed be your name, Lord of Lord and King of the Lord. Blessed be your name, Lord of Lord and King of the Lord. Blessed be your name, Lord of Lord and King of the Lord. Blessed be your name, Lord of Lord and King of the Lord. Blessed be your name, Lord of Lord and King of the Lord. Blessed be your name, Lord of Lord and King of the Lord. Blessed be your name, Lord of Lord and King of the Lord. Blessed be your name, Lord of Lord and King of the Lord. Blessed be your name, Lord of Lord and King of the Lord. Blessed be your name, Lord of Lord and King of the Lord. Blessed be your name, Lord in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Remember where we started our anchor verse said, God is seeking. God mm -hmm. is searching. Mm -hmm. And we pray for ourselves, number one, as, a, as parents, mm -hmm. as caregivers, and then for our children, and as many young people that mm -hmm. are listening. And we pray that while heaven is searching and seeking, whenever the radar of God sweeps over our location, may our names appear. On that brother, can we pray that prayer? Amen. Whenever God Amen. is rather in search of our location, Amen. our name, Amen. our our life, Amen. our spirit man show on this brother. May we not be found wanting in the rather of God. Talk to the Lord. 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 Talk in the mighty name of Jesus, we will be found by you, O God, as you are seeking. In the name of Jesus, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I quoted from Isaiah chapter 57, verse 15. He said, I am the high and lofty one. I dwell in a high and lofty place. But also, that means God has two addresses. That's why he's searching on earth for hearts that will be opened. He said, but also in every heart. So Amen. God dwells, number one, in heaven. But also, that's verse 15 of Isaiah chapter 57. In every heart that is contrite and humble. So tell the Lord, while he's looking for a location on earth to dwell, he's in heaven, yes, but he's looking for a location on earth to dwell. Mm -hmm. Father, I am not asking for a visitation. Amen. I am asking for a habitation. Amen. In the name of Jesus. I'm asking for a habitation. That is why he's searching. He's looking for locations. I am not desiring a visitation. I am desiring a habitation. Come and sit at the mighty name of Jesus. I am looking for a habitation. Oh God, come and dwell in the house. Come and visit the house. เราเล่นกันสักเล่นกันเล่นกันสักเล่นกันเล่นกันสักเล่นกันเล่นกันสักเล่นกันเล่นกันสักเล่นกันสักเล่นกันสักเล่นกันสักเล่นกันสักเล
in that mm. hall of faith. But God spoke to us. I said, by the same parameter, he mm. listed people like Abraham, who lied, who mm. allowed a hidden king to take his wife as mm. a wife for some time until God intervened. By the same parameter, he put the name of Noah, who after the flood, God delivered him and his family. He mm. built the first place in the Bible, you see, altar. Mm. God gave him that revelation. It was the same Noah that had such a privilege. The Bible said he was the first person that drew beer and got drunk. The first time you see somebody getting drunk and God mentioned many names. David, for example, who betrayed his, one of his closest associates. Mm. You know, and uh, slept with the man's wife and betrayed him and planned and killed him. Why would David's name be listed? By the same parameter. God does not judge by the parameters of human judgment. Mm. And anybody that God has not condemned, we should not condemn such a person. And if God has not condemned you, nobody should condemn you. Mm. So the storms, the mistakes, the tribulations, the hurts, mm. the disappointments you have passed through, at this period, God is seeking and searching. He mm. can still give you a second chance. Amen. He gave Samson Amen. a second chance. Amen. Bible said, and his hair began to grow. Can Amen. you ask God that whatever Amen. mistakes you have made up to this point, in life, whatever disappointments you have come across, whatever betrayals, whatever society has branded you, heaven is now searching for those he's going to give a second chance. Whatever has happened in my life, you have not truncate your agenda for my life. I be located by you. May Amen. I be located as you give me the second chance. May I not miss it. Open your mouth. Amen. Amen. Blessed be your holy name, Lord of Lords and King of Kings. We worship you. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for the second chance. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for the second chance. 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 Help us to walk circumspectly in the mighty name of Jesus. Second Amen. to the last. Hallelujah. Amen. Abraham was somebody that after he made that mistake and came up out of Egypt again, he raised an altar to the Lord. He now learned how to do true worship. We we'll won't have time to go into detail. He serviced that altar of worship. Bible said every morning Abraham went back to the place where he met the Lord. At Amen. a point in time he has Open up a channel to heaven that when divinity was visiting Etre mm -hmm. to do something in Sodom, the, the only spiritual access road heaven could use as an interim airport was in front. Le brada da 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 in the name of Jesus Christ, Majuk, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, let's just continue to thank God for that word that we've heard. It looks like we've lost the, the connection. Father, we thank you, O oh God, because you're looking for our hearts, O oh God, and our hearts are available this evening, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Our children's hearts are available, O oh God. 
Oh, take over our hearts, take over our hearts, take over our hearts, take over our hearts. In the name of Jesus, take over our hearts, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Maraba da 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 da. The devil will not take the heart of our children. Marada masun to do do bo zege 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 zege. Take over our hearts, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we give you praise, oh God. We give you worship. Masun de 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 bohanda. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm not sure if um, they're trying to reconnect again. We pray. Amen. Amen. Hello. Are you still hearing us? We yes. can hear yes. you yes, now. Sir. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Our network here went off. I was introducing the last point. I was referencing Isaiah chapter 65. That was the last point I was raising. Mm -hmm. It says in verse 23, and we will not raise children doomed to misfortune. So mm -hmm. our toiling as parents, as mm -hmm. caregivers, mm -hmm. from whatever angle, it mm -hmm. shall not be in vain. Mm -hmm. And God will not allow us to raise the young ones who end up in perdition. Our Amen. toiling shall not be in vain, and Amen. we will not bear children. Can we pray that prayer? And lastly, that our children, the children, one of them shall God shall find them true. They shall walk circumspectly, and every aspect of their life shall be in what happens. Thank you, Holy Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Therefore, Lord, we want to thank you. We pray, Lord, because time and space and distance are no barrier to you. Amen. That you stretch forth your hand and lift all of us in Amen. this part of the world, back there in the UK, and as many as are tuned in from whatever angle on earth, lift us in the spiritual realm. Amen. Lift us, Heavenly Father, before the altar that is before your true room. Amen. That altar where you are the superintendent. Amen. Where Jesus Christ, our high priest, is ministering on our behalf. That we say is able to save us to the uttermost for Amen. all time and eternity upon yes. that altar of restoration. Amen. We pray as many as have already missed it. Now Amen. that you are rather is sweeping the universe, seeking Amen. for true worshipers, Amen. may you find us on your radar. Amen. Heavenly Amen. Father, Lord, may you help us to walk circumspectly before you. Amen. We and the children you have given us, they Amen. shall not end. Our darling shall not end in vain. And Amen. their names will never disappear from the register of Zion. Thank Amen. you, Heavenly Amen. Father. As you sit in throne, may all of us finish well. Amen. May we finish strong. Amen. In Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank wow, you. Praise the Lord. Song. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you very much, ma. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Um, okay, I think I will just hand over to um Pastor Mrs. Iala. Um, Pastor is not a around here, but Pastor Pastor Mrs. can just say a word of prayer and you know conclude and then i will just announce the next meeting praise the lord hallelujah what a great time in god's presence praying not just for the children but praying for our own self as mm. parents as caregivers this is a wonderful session that we have had today we say thank you daddy thank you mommy may god continue to increase his grace upon your life more and more grace according to the word of god in the name of Jesus, spiritual Amen. blessing upon spiritual blessing. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. The Lord from one strength to another strength, from one glory to another. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Let us pray. Let us wrap up this prayer. We've heard, you know, for me, the most important thing is that our hearts mm. is not be a, a visitation. God should not visit us once in a while. Mm. God is a residence. Permanent residence mm -hmm. of the Spirit of God, permanent residence of God. That Amen. is what true worship is. Mm -hmm. That God is residing in us, and then we will realize it's worship mm -hmm. uh, uh, because it's residing in us. Mm -hmm. So today, let's bow our heads as we uh, pray for ourselves and pray for the children again one more time. Mm -hmm. Father, in the name of Jesus, mm -hmm. thank you for this mm -hmm. opportunity to gather together before you. We have not drawn ourselves to you. You are the one that have drawn us mm. to yourself. 
thank you for the time to seek you, O oh God. This time is not even enough, but we mm. know that every prayer we have raised to you, you have heard. It's the mm. confidence that we have that wherever we gather together, you say where two or three of us gather together, you are there in our midst. Mm. And we have had more than two or three. Mm. Lord, so we know you have been here in our midst. We mm. thank you, Holy Spirit, for helping us in the prayers. We mm. thank you for helping us to pray the mind of God, to pray the word of God over mm -hmm. our children, over our own destinies. Mm -hmm. We thank Lord, we thank you that as we have prayed, Lord, upon all of our hearts and upon the hearts of our children. Mm -hmm. Lord, you reside now in us forever as you have promised that your Holy Spirit, that mm -hmm. your sending will live in us forever. Lord, we thank you because you will live in the hearts of our children forever. Mm -hmm. Amen. We have no room in their lives in the name of Jesus. Amen. The enemy will have no room over their hearts in the name of Jesus. Amen. The enemy will have no room over their minds in the name of Jesus. Amen. The enemy will have no room over God over their bodies in the name of Jesus. Their Amen. Body will be sacrificed unto you. Amen. Their minds will be renewed in your word daily. Lord, Amen. their heart, oh Lord, is sacrificed, oh God, is yielded to you, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Amen. That means we are to live from, oh God, and shine your light forth to the rest of the world. Amen. In the name of Jesus, we thank you because our children are light carriers. Amen. In the name of Jesus, and they are multiplying this light, they are taking Amen. it from place to place. Where Amen. they go, they are carrying this light of Jesus with them. Amen. We, just, we give you honor, we give you adoration. We will not sorrow over them. Amen. Amen. Jesus, we will not grieve over there. Yes. The Bible says that Isaac grieved that uh, uh, the, uh, the, the over Esau, Esau and his, uh, his, 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 his wives caused Isaac to grieve mm. in his old age. We pray over our children, we will not uh, grieve over them. They will not bring us sorrow and grief. They will not bring grief to the mind of God Amen. in the name of Jesus. Mm. But they will be mighty in the hand of God. Amen. For bringing great exploits, winning many souls to the Lord in the name of Jesus. Amen. Bless our daddy and our mommy. Uh, Lord, we're so grateful for daddy and mommy Mba for how you have used them all these years. You have used them to bless us, many mm -hmm. of us, in many ways. Thank you. We Thank pray, you. oh God, that your truth will continue in their lives in Amen. the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, that they will continue to carry your truth, oh God, wherever they go. Amen. Increase ministry increase oh god your grace and oil upon their lives mm -hmm. in the name of jesus their mm -hmm. strength will not go down amen increase their strength oh god physically mm -hmm. increase their strength spiritually increase their strength emotionally amen. increase their strength financially increase amen. their strength amen you have given to them enlarge in the name of jesus amen your family too lord you will keep strong amen in the name of jesus no one will fall to the wayside all of us together, we make heaven. Amen. Thank you, God, for in Jesus' name, we are prayed. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Ma. Thank you, everyone, for joining in. I mean, I can't thank God enough. Like, prayer, we are praying, yes, for the past, the present, and the future. Um, we, we cannot stop praying. We, we have to continually be raising our children up and also ourselves. You know, and I just thank God for this, this wonderful time. I hope you have all been blessed as well. And thank you for coming. So the next um, one we're having is on the 3rd of April. And the theme will be light, light of the world light of the world but it will be light of the world in skills you know abilities wisdom and understanding so um we're going to be interceding that for our children so uh, they, uh, we've got a wonderful guest that by the grace of god will be coming so um look forward to that it's, it's just gonna be awesome like the one the time that we've had today thank you so much sir thank you ma i mean <laughs> I'm full, you know, I'm full <laughs> with the word of God. Thank you. Um, I, I'm, I pray that this blesses everyone that have attended as well. So thank you all. Um, and we can just share the grace. Mary Grace, of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the Be with us now. Amen. Amen. Shall we? God's, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. lives.
and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, everyone. Thank God you. bless you. Thank you. See you again. <laughs> on the Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God bless you. See you, Tid.